question four, you've been given some ways that substances can move across membranes. And you've been given some examples of transport across membranes. And you need to select the letter that represents the way in which the substance moves across that membrane. So transport through a channel protein, you should know that that's facilitated diffusion. Transport of small nonpolar molecules, that is diffusion through the phospholipid bilayer. Transport of glucose of, with sodium ions, that's utilising the concentration gradient of sodium, so that's co-transport. Now we've got a figure showing how a plant cell produces its cell wall. So we've got a phospholipid bilayer, we've got what's looking like some channel proteins, we've got a substrate going in and cellulose going out. And in part two, we've been told Y is a protein. One function of Y is to transport cellulose molecules across the phospholipid bilayer. Using information from figure three, describe the other function of Y. Now, the reason students went wrong in this, and this was a very poorly answered question, is because they didn't actually use information from, from figure three. So if we have a look at figure three, now that I've told you that, you'll see that we've got a substrate and we've got cellulose. So what context have we learned about cellulose in? That's biological molecules. And you should know that cellulose is made of beta glucose. And cellulose makes up a plant cell wall. So this must give us some kind of clue as to what the other function is. Perhaps it's an enzyme with a substrate that's going to bind to it and to cause beta glucose to join up to form cellulose. So how are we going to write our answer? So you can see there, the best way is just to bullet point out your answers so you know you've got enough points. We said that it's an enzyme, that the substrate binds to its active site, forming an enzyme substrate complex and that joins them. And um, we've said the type of bond that forms to get our knowledge of biological molecules in there. So if we have a look at the mark scheme, there we go, we could have said it's an enzyme that makes cellulose or joins beta glucose, or you could have got the points like that. Another one requiring to use figure three, what's the evidence? So what can we see in figure three that the phospholipid bilayer shown is part of the cell surface membrane? So if it's not part of the cell surface membrane, what other membrane could it be part of? So they could be talking about an organelle membrane, for example, the membrane surrounding the nucleus or the mitochondria or something like that. So we've got to find some evidence on here. I think the fact that there's cellulose there, we know cellulose makes up the plant cell wall. Plant cell walls are on the edge of cells, so that's our evidence. And let's have a look at the mark scheme for that. There we go, the cell wall forms outside the cell surface membrane or has cellulose on it. And finally, in the cell wall, bonds hold the cellulose molecules together side by side. Tick one box describing the type of bond that holds the cellulose molecules together side by side. So the answer is hydrogen. But if you didn't know that, hopefully you could go through a process of elimination, knowing that ester bonds are in lipids, so it's not that. Ionic bonds, they can be found in the tertiary structure of proteins, and peptide bonds, they join up amino acids.